People talk about what position they should assume in prayer. Most of the time, they are referring to a physical posture or stance. Should I stand and lift my hands? Should I kneel and lift my eyes upward but closed? Should I pray with my eyes open? Should I speak out loud or pray silently? Should I lay down prostrate, flat out before God? While those things may be a matter of personal preference, for God has not spoken to that issue to give us a prescription to follow, we need to see that God is more interested in our spiritual posture and position than in our physical position. In order to position yourself to pray, you must first of all humble yourself. David learned through his experience of sin and forgiveness that he needed not to have a haughty spirit. He had to humble himself before our perfect God. His declaration in repentance was, in Psalm 51, 17, It is a broken spirit you want, remorse and penitence. A broken and a contrite heart, O God, you will not ignore. If you go before God with a high-minded attitude, feeling self-sufficient, feeling that you do not need anyone's help, you will come across as a very demanding and arrogant person. God told his Old Testament people in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, Then if my people will humble themselves and pray and search for me and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear them from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. God demanded humility from them as a condition for hearing and answering their prayers, and he does the same from us. If you want God to hear and speak to you through ears of faith, you must humble yourself. Secondly, you must turn from known sin of any kind. We sometimes wonder why we don't get prayers answered like we ask them. In most lives, where there is unanswered prayer, there are unconfessed sins. God is not willing to deal with us unless we are willing to prepare our hearts for the experience. He wants hearts that are repentant from known sin. David expressed it this way in Psalm 66, 18. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. You cannot go before a holy God without being convicted by his spirit of the sins that are present in your life. David said in Psalm 139, 23 and 24, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. David wanted to be so right with God and sure that nothing would separate him from God and his blessing that he said, If there is anything I have missed, search the innermost being that is me and remove even that sin from me. He believed that unconfessed sin would hinder his prayers. Inventory your own heart and mind. Ask God to check behind you in the power and by the presence of his spirit and claim the promise of 1 John 1 9 to deal with your sins and open the way to successful prayer. John taught if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And third, be quiet before God and wait on him. Too often our prayers are monologues. We do all the talking. We have a list of things to confess. We may say thank you for a few things. We have several petitions, and so we do the majority, if not all, of the talking. We need to tell God the sins that need confessing. We need to give sincere thanks for his blessings. And we need to ask as he has taught us to ask. But we must take time to stop, look, and listen in order to see and hear what God has to show and say to us. I have learned that that takes time. So I have an intercessory prayer time followed by a time of just stopping, looking, and listening. 
During that time, God says important things to me and shows me things I never would have believed possible. Psalm 46.10 teaches, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The reason we miss so much of what God wants to communicate with us is that we aren't quiet before him often enough. Where's the quiet in your life? And then fourth, seek God, not his provision. We often ask God to show us his will. We have a decision to make, and we pray that God will reveal his will to us, that he will unveil his plan. So we ask for his blessing in a particular area. We want to know which job offer to accept. We want to know which home to buy. We want to know which person to marry. We want to know if God is redirecting us to some new work. How often do you just go before God to get to know him better? Paul said in Philippians 3.10, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings. Becoming like him in his death, he said. Paul said the most important thing in my life is getting to know Christ. I give all the rest up in order to know him. God is more interested in our getting to know him than he is in our getting things from him. He wants to have a real personal relationship with us. God told his Old Testament people to humble themselves, seek his face, and turn from their wicked ways. If you will focus on God and seek him, he will show you his will for you, and he will provide abundantly for you. So position yourself to pray effectively this and every day.